What's going on, Chosen Ones? This is Chose the Game back uh, again with another video for you guys. Guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to make you a better pitcher in MLB Perfect Inning 2019. And guys, if you like anything that is MLB Perfect Inning 2019, that means live battle actions, that means three game series, that means tutorials. That means anything at all that is MLB Perfect Inning 2019. Start now by subscribing down below and clicking that notification bell to the right so you are always notified of my next video. Okay, guys, let's jump right into how to make you a better pitcher in MLB Perfect Inning 2019. Pause. Okay, the reason why I actually paused the video is because I wanted to put out a quick disclaimer. I'm going to be talking about everything that I personally believe makes you a great pitcher before you actually start to pitch. Now, there are a lot that goes into pitching, and it's not only just the in-game play. It also takes into effect what you did before you got to the game. So that's what we're going to be going over in this video. We're going to be going over... All the basics that you need to make sure that each and every single pitcher is ready before they actually go in and start pitching. Okay, guys, let's jump right back into it. Play. Okay, guys, jumping right into it here. We're going to be focusing on the manager and the pitching coach positions. Uh, we don't need them to be on the same team, but being on the same page, which is the same synergy color, is definitely beneficial to your pitching staff. Uh, having a three-star pitching coach and a two-star manager is huge. I would love to get a three-star manager. Um, that would definitely push me over to that next level, but right now I haven't been able to get that. Okay, guys, now we're going to talk about one of my favorite starting pitchers. His name is Castillo. He has a four-seam fastball, cutter, slider, two-seamer, and changeup. We're going to be going over all of his attributes so you have a better understanding of what, what each of them mean and why you need to make them as high as possible now with command at 125 what that does is it actually holds the ball in a specific spot that you want to place it if you want to paint that left outside corner and you don't want to give up a walk or you don't want to give up a home run you just want to be at exact at that spot what tends to happen is if you have a lower pitching uh, excuse me a lower pitcher with lower stats then it can swerve off to the left or swerve off to the right and what intends to happen is that could be a difference of a walk and a home run. Okay, so now when it comes to the break, break being at 126, the reason why it's so beneficial to have it that high is because say if I wanted to hit them with the fastball first and then hit them with a say a slider, then the slider, because it has such a high break, it could actually deceive the batter into thinking that it's a fastball and at the last second cut to the left, either for that strike two with with them not swinging or them swinging straight through it thinking that it was initially a fastball and they swang way too fast now the benefits of having your stuff at around 129 almost maxed out at 130 is because now i have the ability of keeping the pitches in the strike zone but not getting it hit for home runs a lot of the times when we pitch the strikes a lot of these great hitters can hit everything for home runs but stuff helps keep everything inside the ballpark um you may give up a single you may give up a bloop single it won't be as devastating as giving up that home run and we all know what velocity is velocity just helps you max out the amount of speed you put behind your fastballs so uh i've seen as high as 104 with castillo i get around 101 102 um, if you over pitch it, probably you can get one, 103. Now, stamina is actually pretty important. I'm, I'm not sure if everybody even knows this, but with your stamina, essentially, that's your yellow bar. And that just tells you how much energy the, the pitcher has. And usually when you start off with the starter, but because the starter has been pitching, supposedly, you know, that's how they think about it. They've been pitching the whole game. Even though you're starting off in the seventh inning, when you're doing live action battle, your your yellow zone won't be as big as if you just started from the first inning. So what tends to happen is you probably play with him, play with the starting pitcher for about an inning, 
maybe even two innings, and then you could switch him out to bring in your relief pitcher. Now, confidence. The reason why confidence is so, so important is because I'm not sure if you've noticed this, guys, but once you get a man in scoring position, you'll start seeing this red ring around your strike zone. Not, not just the strike zone, but your meter, and it will start to blink really aggressively. And the reason why it does this is because the, the pitcher is getting nervous. And at this point, if he doesn't have confidence, it could your, your ball could swerve more as well as you can lose more accuracy with all your pitches. And last but not least, we're going to go into recovery. Recovery is mostly for season play. Um, that's after every game, how quickly the pitcher is going to recover. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do now is go over some of the other aspects of becoming the best pitcher that you possibly can become in MLB Perfect Inning 2019. And of course, the obvious, making sure that you have S grade pitches. I know that that's pretty obvious and that's, you know, common sense, but a lot of pitchers are using A grade pitches thinking that, that they're going to still have great success. If you come across a great batter, and you pitch a lot of balls those balls still can get hit for base hits that's just how the game is and if you if you don't have s grade pitches that can reduce the amount of base hits trust me even i still get base hits hitting off of me with a slider high and out of the zone it happens all the time but what i'm trying to explain to you is that you can reduce the amount of times it happens by getting those s grade pitches the next thing is making sure that your color type matches both your manager and your coach. This helps you build that extra plus velocity, plus two velocity, plus three velocity, whatever they are posting for the coach and the manager, you will be able to gain those attributes onto your pitcher purely based off the fact that you're matching the color type. Okay. If you can get S grade equipments, please do get as many S grade equipments as you possibly can that boosts you up considerably trust me and when it comes down to your skill right now i have starter the reason why i chose starter was because starter actually gives me the ability to get four a plus four on my stuff and if i'm versing another starter that gives me a plus four on my stuff automatically okay guys so now we're going to go into the training aspect of it now with the training here as you can see I'm going to be transferring a training over to my uh, Castillo card. It's very simple, guys. This is the best way, in my personal opinion, to, to take away some of those trainings that you've done with players that you hardly ever play with. And what it does, it actually builds up your pitcher without having to go through all your trainings, especially if you don't have any more trainings left. This will help you build your player a lot faster. So. With that being said, guys, hopefully you liked the video. Leave a thumbs up if you did. And as always, you know what to do. Peace out. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're irresponsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, though You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more A high hard one That's a grand slam